Welcome to this week's ASX edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the ASX 200. I'm also going to cover gold, copper, and uranium. So make sure you stick around for that. I'm going to leave the, a link for the S&P 500 video in the description section below. As always, this is general commentary and doesn't take your personal situation into account. All of that said, let's get into our first chart. So here we have the ASX 200, and it's been, it's been another positive week. The ASX 200 has continued its relentless upward rise that it's, uh, that it's had since um, the, the January low. It's been pretty much one-way traffic for, for around five weeks now. And the overall structure, when I look at this, when I compress this data a bit and I look at this overall, overall structure, it looks constructive. I think it's a, it's a positive overall, overall looking market. And what I do see though, one thing I do see at the moment, just in, in the near term, is that I can't ignore that the market is, the, the ASX 200 does seem to be getting stretched above these moving averages. It's been, it's been a 9% run. Off that, off that January low. So it's been a very, very strong rally. And I think at some point, the market needs to, needs to pause and, and, and consolidate those, those gains. And uh, I'm also, also looking at this and going, well, look, we're only, only 2%. We're only about 2% below a significant resistance area. So this is a triple top resistance from the, uh, the all-time highs. That currently comes in at around 7,600. So from that perspective, I don't see this as an asymmetric entry point to establish an ASX 200 position. Uh, I think that I think that I think that the potential for a, for a, for a pullback is increasing, and the price action over the last last couple of weeks it does seem to be losing some of its momentum. So you may remember last week I showed you a rate of change indicator uh, for the ASX 200. So just recapping on, on what's happened with that. So you can see the, the, the price of the index has been going up, but when you look at the rate of change, it's actually been declining. There's been what we call divergence. So that's a sign that a market could be running out of, running out of steam, and it does sort of start to set the stage for some sort of consolidation or some sort of pullback. So when I when I say pullback, I'm not talking about anything anything significant. I'm I'm looking for for a modest potential for a, for a modest pullback. And pullbacks aren't a bad thing either. Pullbacks are actually quite important in a in a healthy market. Because what a pullback does, it keeps keeps a market in in balance and it stops it from getting overheating. A market that just 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 continues rocketing straight up often will then uh, burn itself out and will come down very quickly as well. So a healthy market will have these have these stages where it will rally, pause, and then rally. It's a bit like breathing. You've got to be able to got to be able to exhale. We can't just keep inhaling. You've got to exhale as well. The market works in a similar sort of sort of manner. And for me, what'll be important if we do see see some sort of um, some sort of consolidation develop over the over the maybe the next next couple of weeks. What does it look like? Is it sort of like a bit of a sideways move, which gives uh, the moving averages time to to catch up? That's the sort of price action I'd want to see. So that's where buy the dip comes in. We want to see we want to see any dips in the index being supported, and that's the underpinnings of a healthy market. You want to see that accumulation. On, you want to see the accumulation on pullbacks, and, uh, and should that happen, then that potentially creates a launching pad for another run higher, and possibly break above this this overhead resistance at around seven thousand six hundred. I don't think there's a there's a need to be chasing stocks higher at the moment. Uh, if we do get this general sort of pullback, it would give the opportunity to to establish positions in companies that uh, maybe have, have run over the, last, over the last four or five weeks. Uh, and also looking at the, just having a quick look at the, the small ordinaries, and it's a similar sort of story. Had this strong rally off support 
over the last over the last few weeks and it has been pausing during this week we have had a pause already develop had a bit of a pullback it's been supported so far so i think the overall structure remains positive and i'm long i'm long the market i'm long the i've got a position in a small cap etf i'm long a whole lot of individual um small to mid cap stocks and uh i continue to trade the market from the from the long side and i've been getting good gains across my portfolio letting profits run letting stocks which i've been getting into as the market's turned up letting them letting them run not being quick to take profits i think that's the most effective way to get an outperform portfolio is that you let your profits run and you and you use risk management to keep your losses relatively small i do that using using trailing stops and spreading risk they're all risk minimization strategies now, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Please leave a, a short comment. Really important thing because it tells YouTube that people are watching and engaging with the videos. If you do that, YouTube shows more people. And that's a big deal for me, so please do that. Also, um, maybe hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And, and better still, come visit me over at Motion Trader. If you haven't been there, come over and see the work I'm doing with, with trend analysis and identifying stocks, identifying um, high risk reward opportunities and see whether that sort of work would fit in with what you're doing with your portfolio. Now, let's go over and have a look at gold. Interesting week in gold. Now, so my radar has been a little bit off on this. I've been looking for this to, to pause for a couple of weeks now, but it just keeps marching higher. It has, um, like the ASX 200, has been a relentless rise it, um, I still think a pullback's coming. It still looks to me to be losing momentum. It did pop higher during the week, but then it came quickly back down on, on Thursday. Look, as I said last, last week, I'm not trying to be too clever with the way I trade my gold positions. I'm not getting in and out. I'm not looking at this saying, oh, I'm going to take some profit. I'm going to buy back when it pulls back because... As we can see by the way I've been speaking over the last couple of weeks, the market won't do what you think it's going to do a lot of the time. So it's not about trying to get in and out. It's trying to get in when you're getting breakouts. We spoke about this breakout back in November. It's getting in, getting into breakouts, getting in when, the, when, this, when, when you start to get momentum and then let those profits run. Don't try and be too clever by trying to take your profits and buy them back because it's very hard to consistently get that right. And uh, um, so my preference is let my profits run. But if we do get pullbacks, they provide opportunities to, to, to accumulate more positions. And also I, I, I resist the urge to, to chase gold stocks after the big runs because I know they can have pullbacks as well. But overall, the structure in gold, I think, is looking really good. Um, having a look at copper, it's been doing kind of more along the lines of what I, what I was saying last week. It is pulling back. Unlike gold, which is holding up, copper has been pulling back. Interesting, we put some Fibonacci retracements on of just of this last, last leg upwards. You can see it's coming back into the Fibonacci retracement zone now. Also got this support level coming in at around four. So in terms of positioning into, into copper and copper stocks, this is getting towards that buy the dip opportunity. We have the moving averages catching up. So there actually is going to be, be um, a few, few cross currents of support just coming in, not too far beneath where the market currently is. Actually, there's three points. We've got Fibonacci's, we've got, we've got, the, um, we've got the support band, and we've got the moving averages. So it be interesting to see how, how copper behaves as it comes into, into this, this region. Lastly, I want to have... I want to have a look at uranium because what I'm going to do here with uranium, I'm going to start with the, um, I'm starting with a weekly chart. Let's get a bigger picture view of what's been going on because it's been, been such a, such a, a boom bust in uranium over the, over the last, last couple of decades now. So we had that big boom during the, during the, uh, the 2000s. We had the bust, we had the long periods of, of, uh, of, of just, just grinding along the bottom. Then we've got the rounding base, big rounding basing formation took place over a few years, and it brings us to, to where we are now. We've had, the, uh, we've had the, the big acceleration upwards during 2001, and for about 16 months now, 
we've had the market moving sideways in this uh, big consolidation. Now that's quite normal price action to get after you get a market that has a big run, you get the big consolidation. This is all, all textbook sort of stuff. And you can see the prices pull back towards the, the 50 and 100 week. Looking at a weekly chart, so these moving averages are weekly, not daily. The 50 and 100 a week will pull back to those. But this is one of those points. This is one of those points where we could see the uranium trend re-engage to the upside. So this is the way I want to be playing uranium. I think the I want to be playing it from the upside. I think the asymmetry in this chart is very much to the upside. So I think the downside risk relatively low compared to the upside risk, upside potential being relatively high. So that's why I want to be playing it from the upside. So I've got a longer term position in a uranium ETF. Uh, I'm also looking at tactical opportunities where, where to potentially get more. So just coming across, looking at the, the daily chart, we spoke about this uh, um, uh, two, three weeks ago, this pullback to the moving averages. I was talking about this maybe being, being a point where you could potentially establish positions um, with, a, with a relatively, relatively low, low risk. So far, that's been playing out. We're getting some movement to the upside. I don't know whether this is this is going to lead to the to a big move higher, or whether or this is just like another another point in a in an in an ongoing meandering consolidation, which may still have many more months to play out. Then maybe we get a big move to the upside, or maybe we don't get a move to the upside at all. We don't know, but that's why I want to play it. I want to play it from the upside. And at the moment, we have the moving averages have turned upwards. The 50-day moving average is above the 100-day moving average. Price is above the moving averages. We have upside momentum. So these are all positive things to take on board and when, when considering when should I take a position in uranium. We get some sort of consolidation over the next, over the next maybe the next, 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 next week or two. Maybe that provides like this. This period during um, mid-January maybe provides another stepping stone to another leg higher. It'll be um, interesting to watch how it plays out. One of the stocks which I'm looking at, one of the local stocks, which is um, interesting local stocks, Boss Energy. It's um, it's been it's been bounded by uh, support at around $1.70 and resistance at around $3.10. Kind of in the in the middle, the upper middle part of the range at the moment. Moving averages are now staying across. So it's it's starting to shape up. Starting to shape up is something which becomes is getting interesting, which is worth keeping a close eye on. Above those moving averages. So I'd like to see what you know, what would be interesting if the price were to pause here over 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 a week or two, get a bit of a platform, then start to, to push upwards. And that could be a point where the moving averages have crossed, it's broken to a new high. Maybe that sets up a run at resistance at around $1.10. So look, I think that's one of those uranium stocks, a local uranium stock, which I'm interested in, which I'd like to keep a, keep a close eye on, and which I do through my motion trader service. It's one of the stocks which will turn up in the scans when the uh, conditions are right. So let's leave that there for this week. It's been another interesting week of price action. Hopefully that's been interesting. Hopefully you've got some good info from the video. Please give me that like. Look forward to coming back. Talk to you next week. Till then, bye for now.